Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channel Television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. 50 years after, actors in the Biafra War speak on the deadliest civil war, seek unity and reconciliation, just as the Southeast Group holds Thanksgiving service, asking the lessons of the era be imbibed for national development. Civil society organization Serap approaches the court to demand publication of details and breakdown of payment of pensions of all 36 state governors, ex officials, and former governors. Benway and Nasara state governors meet over security of the North Central State, ask the federal government to reconsider the withdrawal of troops of Operation World Stroke. And Iranians take to the streets to demand the dismissal of senior officials culpable in the downing of a Ukrainian passenger plane that killed everyone on board. Our website, channelsuv.com, has more information on our top stories and others. Subscribe and watch Channel's television's live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using your mobile device browser or download the Channel CV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. You can also watch us via your smart TV platforms on Apple TV, Android TV, Fire TV and Roku. Now, staying with the commemoration of 50 years after the Biafra War today in Lagos, it was time for stock taking as some of the survivors of that war came together for a Thanksgiving service. The service which held at the Catholic Church of Divine Mercy, Lekki, it was a time to highlight some of the lessons of the war in forging a stronger and more unified country. Our correspondent, Olu Phillips, reports. <laughs> Bright and early worship service here at the Catholic Church of Divine Mercy, Lagos. From the call to worship, prayers and congregational hymn, everything is carefully neat to crystallize the essence of the day's service, celebrating the baptism of Jesus Christ, the Savior, and of course, the significance it bears and should bear on today's living. Beloved, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. From the call to worship, there's a bit of an additive to the service. Some members of the Nzuko Umunna Ndigo and Ndigo Lagos are also in church for a special time to commemorate 50 years of post Biafra War, which held between 1967 and 1970 in Nigeria. The of the commemoration is made in the priest's sermon, which focused on the life of Jesus Christ, which represents in parts justice and love. Jesus says, don't stop at justice. Go beyond justice to do charity. Filing out from church, we asked them, is this a drum of war or an agitation over something? That the Nigerian Civil War was the second worst genocide of the 20th century. Only surpassed by the Holocaust of the Jews. Even the Rwanda genocide was a joke compared to the Nigerian Civil War. In terms of numbers of people killed and, and all of that. We, you have that kind of experience, you want to ensure that people learn enough from it that they never want to go down that track. Is this about discussing the pains and grief? What exactly will be fulfilling for them? Good governance, fairness, equitable distribution of resources, um, sensitivity of our political leaders. In the spirit of reconciliation and reintegration, will they move on? And have they moved on? They've healed but the scars are there. But the most important thing is for us to move on. It is very important to get education right across the country. Because if you get it right in one place, you're going to have people export poverty and illiteracy into another. This is the message coming out from uh, these members of um, the Igbo extractions who are not particularly calling for any other thing other than the strong, indivisible Nigeria. And they've lined up a series of activity to herald this, and you'll be seeing that in the course of the week. From Lekki Lagos, the Catholic Church of the Divine Mercy, Olu Phillips, reporting for Channels Television News.
Half a century ago, Nigeria continued its journey to greatness as the civil war ended. As the nation heals, the ideas and ideals of a developing nation persist. How much has changed since 1970? Should the history and lessons of Biafra be rewritten? Well, tonight's discussion discuss national unity, progress and achievements post-Biafra is Babajide Ogusongo. Good to have you on the program. It's always a pleasure to be, to be here. All right. Talking about uh, 50 years post-Biafra, um, today, does Nigeria now have a recipe for national unity, would you say? Recipe? Perhaps we could ask the first civilian president after... Biafra, if he had a recipe, and yes, late President Shagari had a recipe. He had five things that he said was the recipe to unity and prosperity in Nigeria. And I'll share those five things with you tonight, and I think it will surprise you. But before I do that, there's some question that we need to answer tonight, and that is how many people living in today's Nigeria were alive in 1970? And the National Bureau of Statistics gives us the answer. They say, indeed, they tell us that only 9% of Nigerians are today above the age of 50. In other words, 91% of those living in Nigeria today were not born when that war ended. So the lesson is, more than ever before, we need to ensure that we write our history accurately. Because as the years have gone by, there are fewer people that are alive to tell the accurate story of what happened half a century ago. But let's quickly look at what the late president had shared as his five um, secrets to unity and prosperity in Nigeria. And this was in 1980 when he became president. And he said five things, peace, love, understanding, prosperity, and liberty. And based on the president's advice, he was strong in those words that these were the five things that would lead, and that was his blueprint for peace and prosperity in Nigeria. Now that we've looked at that, the second thing that we should take a look at is what has really been the progress between 1914 and 1970 and 1970 to date? In other words, how have we created and reformed the country? And if we take a careful look at that, we'll see that from 1914, yes, we had the amalgamation of two protectorates into one country. And then we moved to that year, 1939, when then Bernard Bodilon created three regions. And that was the northern, the eastern, and the western region. Those was the first, that was the first time Nigeria had three regions, 1939. In 1969, we then went from three regions to four regions. To four regions. That was when the Midwestern region was created. In 1967, we went from four regions to 12 states, and then we went from 12 states in 1976 to 19 states, and the journey continued and continued. But what does all of this mean? If we follow and carefully study our history between 1914 to 1970, and after 1970, the summary is there really was no civilian president that created any state in Nigeria. All the states that we have in today's Nigeria were all created by a military president. In other words, this and the concerns we've had is really not about favoritism or nepotism. There are some structural challenges that were created not by civilian presidents, but by history of military leaders. And that is, those are the areas and those are the linkages that we need to correct. Now that we have 36 states, we now need to look at how can we ensure that these states produce prosperity for Nigerians. And perhaps that's what I was going to ask, linking the creation of those states at those times for those regions to, to what national unity should look like in the future. Because many people have said inclusive governance, that some regions, uh, some individuals feel left out, but how can we ensure that everyone is, is catered to? Two words, developing potential. You know, speaking about regions, now that we have the facts that shows that no state was created by 
a civilian president. It all started from regions. Let's look at the regional perspective of this, uh, of the of the opportunities within within the country. And if we take a look at that, yes, we know that across all these regions, we generated 1.1 trillion naira internally generated revenue. But the evidence, if we look at it from those three regional perspectives, the northern, the eastern, and the western region, which is our real foundation, today what we have is that the western region accounts for 53% of all money generated internally. The northern region accounts for 26%, and the eastern region accounts for only 21%. So the secret and the unity and the programs for the future should be to ensure that we create a more even balance among all the regions. That is where the secret lies, and that is developing potential across all the states and across the regions. As it is today, most opportunities are concentrated based on the evidence we have in the western region. We need to create more opportunities in the north and in the east. But in all, I remember the words of American industrialist Henry Ford, who says that, or who said that, Coming together is the beginning. As Nigeria come together, yes, we have. And Ford continues by saying, keeping together is progress. Are we keeping together? Yes, we are. But finally, Henry Ford says, working together is success. And the evidence we have today, based on all what we've discussed, is Nigeria has come together, Nigeria has kept together, but we now need to work together. But if there was one thing, uh Sadly, you don't have a crystal ball, but you have a football, um, you know, that you would say government should, should focus on to achieve a prosperous nation. What would that be? Developing everyone's potential. But let's look at it from a different perspective. If national unity were to be a penalty kick, what has it been in the last half a century, in the last five decades since 1970? Has it been over the, over the bar? Did they hit the post or have we, have our leaders scored a goal? And based on the evidence we have, based on Erin Ford's definition of coming together and keeping together, yes, I think we've seen that penalty kick being scored and yes, we've made significant progress. Our future and our focus now should be to make sure that we work together because we've come together, we've kept together. This is now the decade that we must work together for everyone's prosperity. All right, many thanks, Baraji Dungasoa, for sharing your insights and analysis on the News at 10. The pleasure is all mine, Millicent. When the news at 10 returns, residents of Allen Moore, the local local government area of Benway State, decry the poor state of roads, schools and other basic social amenities. That's in our community report tonight. Please join us again.